Hi everybody, I'm Jared Diggerson, the Watershed Specialist for the Potter County Conservation District. We're here today to talk about aquatic organism passage, especially through culvert structures like this one. So this culvert is a bottomless arch culvert that was put in by the district in 2017 to help make sure that wild trout can get upstream through this structure. The original structure here is a six foot round pipe that was way undersized. The stream here is roughly 20 feet wide in places is at a bank full of width. So it was creating a large scour hole on the downstream side. The Potter County Conservation District is part of a multi-state collaborative called the MAC program. It's the North Atlantic Aquatic Connectivity Collaborative. Now, states all over the Northeast go out and they have different agencies and groups that come out and survey these culverts. They take a few basic measurements, such as length, width, and whether or not those structures have any kind of obvious barriers that would stop aquatic organisms from using the structure and passing upstream into ha different habitats. This structure was implemented by the Potter County Conservation District in 2017 to replace a six foot round pipe that was placed on the stream with a severe outlet drop. The pipe dropped the water several feet from the bottom of the pipe to the bottom of the stream. It created a large scour pool and it was completely impassable for aquatic organisms. We removed that structure and put in this bottomless arch structure which now serves as completely passable bridge stream interface. It has dry passage on one side for non-aquatic organisms such as raccoons to go under the road. It also maintains deep enough water through the middle through all times of the year to make sure that aquatic organisms such as fish can get upstream and access varied habitats above this point. The structure we're at now is a structure that was implemented by the Potter County Conservation District in Bingham Township in 2019 to replace a two-foot pipe that was originally on this stream and a complete aquatic organism barrier. This stream is a very low gradient, rather small, but it does hold some wild fish. So now the township wanted these structures primarily because they don't have any kind of maintenance requirement once they're put in. A two-foot pipe could very easily be blown out in a good gully washer. In this structure, the township is never going to have to worry about that. As opposed to the one we just looked at, where it was a bottomless structure, these structures were actually placed in the hole with bottoms. But just because it has a bottom doesn't mean you can't leave it like a regular round culvert pipe. The district made sure that the township came in and built in some form of margin inside this structure. We used a walk behind skid steer to place in R6 rock along the margins and fill in the bottom of the structure with native material to make sure that it would readjust and become more natural like the stream around it. So now we're at another road stream interface with a single culvert pipe. This interface is a private driveway on a tributary to the Genesee River. And what we're dealing with is a round metal pipe that is very likely impassable to fish. This pipe is set at an angle that the water comes down through at an increased velocity compared to the rest of the stream. And it was, as we'll see when we move to the upstream side, there is an inlet drop where the water has to make a vertical drop to get into the pipe. So a pipe like this, when we throw it into our data sheet with our measurements and then plug it into the NAC system, we'll likely come back with a score of a severe barrier. Where I'm currently standing in this relatively deep water is a direct result of this pipe. Because this pipe is much smaller than what it should be to handle the stream, it has essentially had a fire hose effect and dug out this big plunge pool. Although these pools can oftentimes be great for stock trout or even for wild trout to hold in, they're not natural and they shouldn't be here, simply because this pipe is much too small for the stream. I'm now standing at the upstream side of our culvert pipe. 
Down at my feet is a pretty good stack of rock that looks like it was placed here intentionally because it's a little bit larger than the natural substrate in the stream. It creates a pretty good fall from where I'm standing down into the bottom of the pipe. That's part of what makes this pipe an aquatic organism passage barrier. So this pipe and its internal structure <laughs> is also more likely to catch debris that's floating down through during a period of high water. This pipe is probably going to get a score of severe barrier when we plug it into the NAC system. The dam behind me is the worst case scenario for aquatic organism passing. It's roughly five feet tall and was built directly across the stream with no way for fish or aqua other aquatic organisms to get up and around. This dam was built illegally on the stream and is a great example of what not to do to a stream on your property. It created a large impoundment upstream that is now silting in. And it's going to take a very large comprehensive effort between us and the Fish and Boat Commission to go ahead and pull it out. So the reason the Potter County Conservation District is so concerned with aquatic organism passage has to do with our wild and reproducing trout. So many of our streams in the county, even if they don't harbor enough trout to be class A wild trout, are still designated as naturally reproducing wild trout streams. And those trout need to be able to access the headwaters of our streams. They need to be able to get up there for cold water in the summertime and to find potential mates during the fall so that their populations don't become genetically isolated. Genetic isolation can lead to mutations and it can also make the fish less resilient from potential stressors such as pollution or water temperature increases. AOP is highly important and there's many new grant programs that are run through the state and federal government to help pay for these projects.